you know, back, um, back into our discussions, but uh, where we were at with the broadband issue, I think that what we can do is go ahead and kind of uh, move on from this right now because we do have some other information that we can make for tomorrow's presentation and we'll be able to delve back into this, in this particular issue a little bit deeper. Uh, but as I said, this is uh, this is huge. It's a huge for the state of Georgia. Uh, and hopefully we'll just do discussions at the beginning of now. Uh, we'll be, we'll, be, we'll uh, begin to see the benefit for everybody. But I will, as I said, we're going to have to do something. We can't continue to just sit here and wait on somebody else to do the job. We're going to have to move forward with some ideas, especially on the lines of where it kind of help in the situation of protecting the so, so we have this opportunity for this plan to move some more well. All right, in the ports, identify the value of Lambs County becoming an in and ported developed plan of action to market the concept. This will continue to discuss this goal with state and local state, stakeholders while initial statements from those at the state level indicated this may not be an option in the near future. Discussions over the last few months have led to this concept being given stronger consideration than before. Current status is that the chairman continues to monitor the feasibility of this goal. Economic development priorities at the state level continue to impact the probability of this matter. And I do pay close attention to it. Um, I, I look at the reports that come back from the Georgia Ports Authority, and uh, I feel like, as, as much as I really would, would love for Ballast and Lambs County to, to be designated one of the inland ports, I think that it's a, at this point, it's going to be difficult for us to get there. Is it impossible? No. But is it difficult? Yes. If you look at the target market that the Georgia Port Authority has identified as their market, it's north and west. It completely, they have nothing targeted for their market basically to the south and west. Um, I, I have to assume to some degree that, that they look at that market as being served in Gulf ports across the state covers that market. So it kind of just kind of carves out southwest Georgia altogether uh, from the standpoint of their market, their target market. And so I get that and I understand it. Now the, the opportunities are still there in some role uh, as they complete Highway 84 and get it four lanes all the way uh, to Brunswick. That connector there, certainly with the Port of Brunswick, could have a larger impact on us over here in Lowndes County. We also have uh, the, 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 the high possibility of, uh, of working toward a intermodal port. That's where the, maybe the, the containers themselves, that there could be something here that, would, that a investors or a company would identify Lowndes County as a good location for support for such as where these containers and all of those things can be repaired and built or constructed because of just the container industry itself to support that port over there is huge. I mean, they're growing by container units on a daily basis. And those containers wear and tear. And so, Right now, the, the port and all of the facilities around that area right there is expanding just to support the freight that's coming and going to the ports. But from the standpoint of the possibility of, of <coughs> all of our rail connections and Highway 84, um, you know, there could be some possibilities of working with private investors type situations that, you know, we may be identified as a location for where maybe the, the containers can either be fabricated and or uh, repaired and those sort of things. So there's, there's different possibilities. But I just, I feel like personally that for Valdosta to Lowndes County to be identified as an inland port based on what 
the Georgia Portal Authority's as target, target market is, is, is going to be a difficult haul for us right now. I don't think we need to take our eye off of it. I think it's something that we need to continue to work with. I know the folks uh, in economic development, you know, when they have their opportunities, they continue to talk about it. I know when I have my opportunities, I talk about it as well. So it never hurts to keep marketing your area for something, but I just, I just have gotten the feeling that it's, that it's, it, it's getting further and further away from us for the probability of being identified as an inland port. Right now, our identification for this area is in the Cordill region, and the Cordill region is just on the edge of their target market for the north and west. So that's what they, that's kind of the way they are approaching our this southwest segment of the state of Georgia right now. So I think it still works being a long-term goal, staying in that position, and just continue to work on it and see what may develop out of the possibilities of whatever benefits that Lambs County could in the future gain from the Georgia ports. Chairman, so, so did you suggest, was it intermodal? Did you call it? Um, yes, sir. As a short-term or long-term, or I guess, Goal versus the end port, intermodal, I think is what you said. I think that that's what you that's what it's going to eventually come to. Um, but we can we can just leave it right now as inland ports, but in our discussion with um, with, with the uh, decision makers, we can keep saying also inland port. We have that interest, but certainly any other support aspect that we can play for the Georgia Port Authority is going to be important for Lowndes County, so we want to kind of keep that in front of them. Is that fair enough to everybody to understand that? Right. Our next uh, goal was Adult Drug and or the Mental Health Court. That goal is to work with local court representatives and research for benefits and financial feasibility of expanding the Lowndes County support structure to include an adult drug and or mental health court beginning with an analysis of the number of local offenders that might be served and a study of how programs are administered in other communities similar in size and offender rates. Meetings with the criminal justice stakeholders continue to be productive and have been. Most recently, the county allocated matching grant funds finalized the budget of an accountability course for felony offenders. Officials and staff are currently focused on a consolidated software package reporting options uh, for misdemeanor convictions, a local reporting education center for offenders, and other improvements aimed at a positive impact on the county's recidivism. That's always bad. <laughs> Repeat offenders. <laughs> Current status in February of 2016, the Spirit Court of Lowndes County established accountability courts addressing substance abuse, mental health, and the veterans. In January of 2017, the State Court of Lowndes County established a DUI court. In January of 2017, for the Southern Judicial Circuit, the State of Georgia also located a parental accountability court in Lowndes County. So we have made great strides on through that uh, on that goal as far as accountability courts go. Um, I, I must say that uh, Commissioner Griner and Commissioner Evans have been extremely instrumental in working through those processes and numerous meetings uh, with, with um, our court judges as well as the providers to try to work through this process and and um, we've made, made great strides on this. Um, it is something, in all fairness, that we're going to have to continue to look at, continue to monitor, because at this point right now, our funding requirements have been on the grant to get it started. Uh, however, there's going to be added an additional funding and an increase in funding that's going to be required. So we're definitely going to have to look at that and consider those options. Um, I have made this comment to at least one of the judges, uh, and I, you know, I still firmly believe that. These are all accountability courts, but the accountability courts are going to have to have accountability as well. I mean, they're going to have to show that what they're able to do and just the fact that they're there and, and how they handle these uh, violators 
is benefiting our community, benefiting Lambs County. Uh, we know that if we can get them out quicker out of the jails, that's one benefit. Um, however, we have to we have to be conscientious of the fact of how much money we're going to be spending for accountability for it, for what the benefit that we're getting on the other side. So again, it's being being good uh, stewards of the taxpayers' dollars, and we have that responsibility to do that. So that's one thing that we'll need to continue to focus on. Mr. Chairman, one thing I wish every time all of you have an opportunity to come and sit down on the court system for what they are the veterans included in this accountability? Yes, they are in the Superior Court. Or the Superior Court accountability. It's a uh, drug mental health and the veterans court. In the Superior Court. Hey, can we ask one of the staff members to, to I know it sounds absolutely late, but if it's already a couple of those dates and say, yeah, hey, here's the date of my health court and everybody can. She's sending that along with the um, kind of synopsis on where they are. It's kind of a two-year program. Once they identify someone and they put them in the program, um, I talked to Justin about it. And, you know, what happens is there's several levels they go through. And if they go through level one and they graduate to level two and they're not performing as they're supposed to in level two, they'll fail them back to level one at a certain point, And then they work themselves back up to that. So um, we are just... Crossing our first year, we just we're right at our first year anniversary of kicking that off. So by this time next year, they should have some actual graduates ready. But yeah, she's sending me kind of a synopsis for you all of where they are now and also some of those dates. Yeah, I, I had the fortunate um, opportunity to attend the kickoff for the parental accountability board. Um, it, it's very small, like a lot of them start out, but I. You have to believe that the process itself is going to provide the best opportunity for that offender to take advantage of, of the court system to improve not only their life and their livelihood, but the livelihood of their family as well. So any of them that's really willing and truly ready to embrace a change that's going to provide them with the support to be successful, and that really is what these accountability courts do. In my opinion, um, it, to me, as much as being offered, it's just about the last opportunity that they will have. Because they'll have every opportunity to get every bit of support that they need to be successful. Whether it's a DUI court, whether it's a parental court, whatever it is, um, that's probably going to be their last best chance, in my opinion. And these are people who have already been convicted. This is not a get out of jail free thing. This is a make your life better instead of just sitting in jail. And one of the things the judges said is if they don't do what they're supposed to, they go back to jail for a few days. And they don't think about it. service 
to move the Air Force Base through that P-4 initiative. Uh, officials and staff content, continue to be very active in this area through communication with Moody Air Force Base leadership and the exploration of additional partnerships. Now, this, this Moody support is, uh, we've touched on this on the other subjects, is it's, it is a huge for Lounge County. Um, and there are several facets of it. The Chamber has the South Georgia Military Affairs Council, which consists of representatives from Lowndes County, Cook County, Berrien County, and Lanier County to work on the efforts uh, to support Moody Air Force Base. Um, they do a great job in the, in the area that they work on. I know from Lowndes County's standpoint, we have, we have looked to try to identify things we've participated in the P4 initiative and the water and sewer agreement between the Department of Defense and Lowndes County is one of, or is, the premier P4 initiative project in the entire Department of Defense. I mean, it, it, it's been recognized. This is what, this is what we envisioned that out of the P4 initiative with local governments, this is what we would get. Basically, it's saving um, Moody Air Force Base roughly $250,000 a year, a uh, million dollars over the life of the, of the contract, and then hopefully if everything is good, that contract will continue. Um, I would have to say that Lowndes County gained the big out of it. One, we got it. Out of that agreement, we ended up with an employee that was that was running that facility, who is now our utility director, Mr. Steve Stoudy. That was a great pickup, which I say that would be a win out of that for us, um, as well as potentially down the road, uh, there there's the possibility of some future agreements that we will be able to have some redundancy off of that particular system that Lowndes County will be able to benefit from. So I believe that that's huge for Lowndes County. Um, and, and we're doing it without a loss in the budget. So we're doing it and still being able to pay for it through that agreement. Yeah, there, <coughs> actually there was um, some additional revenue added in that still resulted in the savings that you're talking about. Right. As far as the Air Force is concerned, it gave us a little cushion as well. Right. So the Air Force, they are extremely satisfied with that initiative. Uh, out of that P4 initiative, uh, some know and some don't. Right here in the, close in the Lake Park area, the uh, Grassy Pond reserve over there has been opened up to the public. Any of the citizens in Lowndes County can now go to the Grassy Pond Recreation Area and utilize that. That's something I feel like is if, if that word was out and, and got advertised better, that, that place over there would just be run over on the weekends by citizens in Lowndes County. Because again, it becomes a quality of life issue. Uh, so I think that that's, that's really a good benefit to come out of it. There are several other initiatives that are still being worked on, but to come back to my point with Moody Air Force Base, it is a total and complete community effort to support Moody Air Force Base. I have taken it upon myself uh, to be much more proactive with Moody Air Force Base because it's just that important for our community. Um, so, Mr. Pritchard, myself, we meet with Colonel Gumpel any time that he wants to meet with just a phone call away. I can contact him by a phone call. It's not an issue that I've got to worry about how I'm not going to get in touch with him. Um, so we have good communications, uh, and that good open communication is going to be key. There are other initiatives that we are currently working on that we're going to see how we can get through. But I think, again, Moody support is a community issue. It's something that we, Lowndes County local government, can't take that responsibility on by ourselves, and we should. It should be by all the local governments, and it should be by every citizen in this community should have in their mind that they support and embrace Moody Air Force Base, the existence of it here in Lowndes County, as well as, as we said, those, those airmen 
that's uh, stationed out there to do you. Another big thing that, I, that I'm huge on is that uh, I feel like if there's things that we can do as a community, again, not local government, but as a community, to continue to find ways that we can support the spouses of these airmen when they are deployed. Uh, if there's an issue from Lowndes County standpoint with, with uh, maybe the issue that a, a, that's happening with a county service or something like that that comes about with a spouse, a lot of times they don't know how to handle those issues. We need to be really proactive, and I'm sure we are with our staff right now, to react very quick to their needs to try to help them through that process to where maybe their, their husband is deployed and they don't have they don't just don't have the background and the knowledge to say how do I handle it. Uh, so we can look at a lot of different things, but we support. We will continue to do that. That's not one of our. <coughs> I guess you could say it's long term, but it's an all term. It's an all time. Oh. Issue. Do you want to mention now about trips? I, I can do that. Um, I'm talking about the one that's right coming up. Yeah, okay. Um, through the P4 initiative, as I said, moving everything <coughs> place in Lowndes County has rec been recognized nationally for uh, the wastewater treatment agreement. Um, I've been asked to go out to San Antonio to a meeting with the, um, uh, the American Defense Communities, Association of, of Defense Communities. And along with uh, Colonel Reardon Smith, who is actually the base commander, uh, to do a presentation and participate in a forum about this P4 initiative and about this wastewater treatment initiative and how it came about, what the obstacles were, how we overcame those obstacles, and the benefit of not only the Moody Air Force Base, but certainly the benefit of the community. So I'm going to that, that meeting uh, on the 27th and 28th, I believe it is, which will be our next meeting. I've already spoke to Vice Chairman Evans, and so she's going to take my seat during that meeting and run the work session and, the, and our regular meeting. I, that will be, uh, I will be asking at that meeting. But again, it's, it's, it's one of those things that is important for Lowndes County support Moody Air Force Base, and now we have the opportunity to showcase Lowndes County and that support on a national stage. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that trip. We're going out there, of course, as I said, with Colonel um, Reardon Smith um, and Mr. Michael Lee, who is the Lowndes County co-chair for the South Georgia Military Affairs Council. He's going out there as well. Uh, along with, uh, I found out just yesterday, Mr. John Hughes is going away. So it'll be the four of us out there will be representing Lowndes County. Michael is going to stay out here for the duration of the, uh, of the conference to kind of gather any information that he can from a community standpoint on how you can help support your military bases. That's their role as a chamber uh, initiative. Um, my role is to go out there and, and talk about the P4 initiative Plan that ends on Tuesday at 12 o'clock, and I'm getting on the bird coming home. So, sure. uh, how is Mr. Parker Green? Well, Mr. Parker Green, um, as you know, he had to have some surgery. He had to have some bottled up blockage that had to be taken care of. And what I understand is that his recovery has been slow. He had to go through, a, as they call a swing bed, uh, for I guess 21 days is typically what they do with do that. He is not getting out much. He is at home. Dr. Dr. Lucy is taking care of him at this time. Um, and, you know, time changes a lot of things. And that's one of the things that it is going to change. This community has been one of the biggest assets that this community has had in the Air Force Base is Parker Green. Um, this has been said many times, but his influence is just unbelievable. I mean, it really is. When, when 
Parker Green walks down the hall to the Pentagon, people part. They go to the side of the walls and step in line to see you think the president was coming down the hall. That's the influence that that man has dealt with. Now, maybe they're all addicted to satchel to I don't know. And they're waiting on their, their big end. I'm not sure which one it is. But, but his influence and his help for Moody Air Force Base has been, you can't make it. It's him there. Uh, and uh, I can't tell you right now how that is going to turn out. Mr. Parker's health is not the best that it could be. I don't want to get too much into what his actual health is because that's their business. Um, however, this community is going to miss and lose a huge advocate for Lowndes County and Moody Air Force Base when we live in Parker Green. Now, where do we go from there? I don't know, and it's been said that there's not any one person that can replace Parker Green. Parker Green has become Parker Green because of the 30 years that he's been doing what Parker Green does. Is he retired military? No, he never was retired military. Mr. Parker was Army um, and retired from Rhodes Furniture, which was used to be over on the corner of Gordon Street and uh, Patterson Street. He was the manager of Rhodes Furniture, but was involved in the original Moody Support Group as a community partner working through that. And he just began to kind of do it and had, had an act for it. He embraced that. The folks in the Department of Defense and the Air Force specifically embraced him as well. Um, and um, he has a tremendous amount of respect that, that comes to him from the Air Force. You can't just say, Mr. Air Force, here's our new representative. I hope you like it. It don't work that way. And it will not work that way. Um, there are some initiatives of some folks trying to fill some of those voids. Um, I'll be honest with you, I hope, I hope that that is successful. <coughs> uh, but there's, that's yet to be seen on whether or not that's going to be successful or not. But again, what it's going to really do is put the pressure on all of the other groups, including Lowndes County, to step up their support for Moody Air Force Base. This community has felt real comfortable in, in the past because we always felt like Parker was there looking after all that. Parker was taking care of it. We didn't have to do anything until Parker came to us. And that has been the model. That's the way it's worked. But that will change. Uh, it's called time changing day. And so when uh, when that day comes, then we're we're now everybody beginning to kind of kind of improve what they do and try to do it better, and try to make more communication. That's the reason why it is important that we continue these relationships, not only with the personnel and whoever's in charge of Moody Air Force Base, whoever that wing commander is, but also with the folks at the Pentagon, because. Um, we don't we don't have that the, the Parker Green level of access at this point right now. Think about what literally our landscape literally in the year would, would look like if Parker would have never came into the picture. I mean, all that he's gotten us through over the past 20, 30 years. And our community all together would look a whole lot different. Well, we could be, we could be sitting here. Hopefully, we'd be far up the wall now, but from the last frack, we could be sitting here trying to figure out what we're going to do with all that property out of the Moody Air Force Base. What used to be the Moody Air Force Base. And that $850 million economic impact that makes up part of Lowndes County right now, how are we going to replace that? That would be a tremendous, tremendous hurdle to have to try to get over. Could we get over it? We could. Uh, I have said a lot of times it would take 15 to 20 years probably to overcome the closure of the movie Air Force Base. Just from the just from 
all of a sudden you snatch that out. That's huge, especially for a, a small community such as Lambs County. Um, so with that, uh, the, the, the initiatives and the things that we work with with Moody, we need to continue to do those. We need to look and see where they can be enhanced that, continue to improve those. Uh, and there are continuing issues that we work on that Mr. Pritchard is part of just about every day uh, of issues that relate directly to Moody Air Force Base. It may be, you know, our uh, MAZ zone. It may be a tower wanting to locate near Moody Air Force Base. It, just numbers and numbers of things that keeps coming up that has to be addressed. And the first thing that you have to get off the table or get done is just, is this good for Moody Air Force Base? That's the first thing in the way you have to look at. So, Again, Mr. Pritchard does a fabulous job of knowing that that's how important that is, and, and they do a great job of continuing to work on that. So. Okay. They they never did exercise exercise that option, and um, because the money's found somewhere through uh, the Pentagon, Department of Defense, something to continue that library operational base. But, uh, you know, we allocated money in to our library budget and it was not utilized. Uh, but the library has um, come back and said they want their money back. <laughs> yeah, plus one. But uh, that is, the crux of the matter is, was the service being provided out there. It still is provided. Yeah. And I think it may have been expanding a little bit. Not a lot, but they were they were like uh, a raisin drying up there for a while. So. They got shut down because of sequestration, <clears throat> but then they found the extra funding that was able to keep that keep the library that was on place up for that current where it's at. So that need has actually just gone away. What kind of event at your home? Can I hear us? No, I, 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 I have thought about that. And, and we need to do that. Uh, I've thought about it. I would like to, and I don't have a problem at all with hosting an event out there uh, as long as it doesn't storm and I don't have uh, chicken litter or wild <laughs> scattered everywhere. So we can do that. But, <laughs> but reality is, is that that would be a good event. I don't know, I mean, you could do it on a yearly basis, but I feel like that. Would be really, really good to do it when you have a new base, a new wing commander that comes in, when you have that leadership change that gives you an opportunity. Uh, the issue is, is that they're here for two years. Their staff is here for two years, typically on an alternating basis from when they're here. So you don't have. Part of his leadership team is here for one year, and then he has to work with another leadership team. So if you want to know all of them, you want to know all the players out there and have that opportunity. I think we had maybe 15 or 20 of his leadership team was out there and arrived that night. You remember right? Um, so yeah, I think that that's something that we need to continue to do. But to answer, <clears throat> I think your question a little bit further is, um, Colonel Conkle has offer to the chair to host the commission at the base and do a briefing on Moody and the various missions involved, etc. And the chairman has discussed maybe exercising that invitation and going down there and y'all having that opportunity. Some of them have already been, I'm sure, but mm -hmm. as a, a board, I don't think we've ever Yeah, I mean, we'll, I mean we, the discussion has gone as far as for something such as this retreat. He would open up Moody Air Force Base and a facility out there that if we wanted to have the retreat at Moody Air Force Base, we, we would be more than welcome. Um, I think if, you know, if we wanted to consider something like that, again, the more you have that communication back into with them, uh, it's like a good neighbor. 
If you don't ever talk to your neighbor, you really don't know what kind of neighbor you got. But if you have good communications, most of the time you don't have a good neighbor. And red carpets are effective. Red carpet does a fantastic job. They always have. That has now moved from, I would say, a, a chamber event initially to where now it's more or less a private group that's doing it on their own. Am I right? That's right. I would say that's technically correct. Technically correct. I just know you find out a week. That's a week prior to the event. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it versus the couple of weeks a month advance. Yeah. Yeah. I can get that calendar from the end year. Yeah, that would be good if we had that and if they could just go ahead and get that calendar. That, that'd be, I know it'd be helpful. Maybe switch to the thing in my calendar. But I have confidence to send you out every year. But um, again, it, it's a it's an effort that we need to that we need to do, and I will say this: I would welcome each one of you commissioners when there is when there is an event that's going on in the community that that Moody has a role. You might say maybe it's something they're sponsoring, maybe it's their their open house that they have out there when they have the Thunderbirds that come in. It is a great opportunity for you to go out there when they know that you're coming. You'll get the red carpet treatment from Moody Air Force Base. And so we're doing the same thing. We have offered up uh, to Moody Air Force Base for our next P4 meeting. Since this started, we've always done them at Moody Air Force Base. Lowndes County is going to host the next P4 meeting, and we're going to do it. It'll be held on March the 12th. Um, you, you're welcome to come and, and participate in that meeting as well. But it's a, I feel like that again, the more we can communicate, the better off we're going to be with Moody and those folks. And, and I'll be honest with you, you can look at it. These folks rotate out of here. You don't know where they're going, but a lot of them end up at the Pentagon. They're going to make a cycle through the Pentagon. They're going to be decision makers in the future about things that could benefit Moody Air Force Base. So from a selfish standpoint, as much as anything, it's good that we continue those contacts, continue those relationships, and build a good, positive relationship with these individuals. The, the, the class, I want to say it again, the class that I was fortunate enough to be able to go to the National Security Forum last year, it was incredible, y'all. We had a night group of folks, and among those distinguished leaders, and I mean, you think about the service to our country and their rankings and where they're going, And then, you know, when, when all the in our group uh, realized that I was from, you know, the area where Moody Air Force Base, the county where Moody Air Force Base was, I mean, it was like, you know, most of them recognized the name and, and, and related that to hospitality, southern hospitality, you know. South South. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was <coughs> Well, one of the things that's been said to the people at Moody in comments from moving back to uh, the county of the year since I've been here is that uh, once you come to Moody, you're part of the Moody family, and no matter where you ever go, you're always considered part of Moody. And they, they feel that and comment about it, and you look around and see how many retirees you've got. When they get ready to retire, they say, you know, I can go back. I got to tell you, my last red carpet repair a couple, of, about a month, a couple of months ago, I was able to, uh, my nephew just graduated, graduated from OCS for the Air Force, and he came, and he kind of, he really enjoyed it as well as uh, Colonel. He enjoyed hanging out with him, took a picture or two with Parker Green and all that, and, you know, it was a real, real good experience. And, um, he's already talking about once he, after he hit one new station or two, he's going to be coming back, you know, so, um, real powerful. Well, again, but those things didn't happen over, overnight. It happened overnight. It's a continuing effort. And so the point with this is that we need to continue that effort. And I would say as much as anything, look at ways that we would serve in any other citizen in this community. Are there ways that we can enhance that relationship and the things that we do for the Air Force Base? That's as important as anything else in this community. It's a huge set. That needs to be just a continued focus that we have. And we'll continue to focus on. Okay? That takes 
here of our current gold. Um, one of the things that the chairman asked us to <coughs> tonight copies and have prepared are for additional um, smart goal worksheets. So I think you all go through the rest of the new items here. If there are things that you want to go ahead and track out what you might want to consider as well tomorrow, and then you all set your final goals, that you can work on those things as we go along instead of trying to remember what your goals were.